the School PR Podcast. Welcome back, Matthew. Without telling me what shirt you're wearing, how could you tell me what shirt you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Cultural icon. Let's just go with that. And here we go. Be sure to visit soundmind.app, peachjar.com, and nickelstrategies.com. Advocating for public education, sharing our stories, and celebrating our schools, students, and staff. From crisis communications to media relations, social media, and everything in between, we're here to give you the best strategies, tools, and techniques to help you help others. Welcome to the School PR Podcast, brought to you by Peach Jar, Sound Mind, and Nickel Strategies. Here's your hosts, Matthew Jennings and Ryan Ferran. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'd love for you to give a like and follow to our Facebook page, Instagram, X. Matthew, that that's a shirt you're wearing. That is piece. a shirt. <laughs> it's so we'll describe it. We'll see if people. It's pink. Yep. It's um a recent movie. We shall say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yep, cultural phenomenon, cultural relevant. Now, did you relevant. did you see this movie? Oh yeah, a couple of times. Couple of times. Yeah, it's worth it's worth a couple of watches. <laughs> well, you do have a uh, young kids. Yeah, yeah. Daughter, is that is that who dragged you, or you dragged yourself? Uh, no, actually, no. I I did. It had nothing to do with the kiddos the first time. Just friends and uh, check that out, and that was that. Did you take the kids? Actually, no. Uh, and I wanted to see it because my daughter saw it and she thought it was like an actual like Barbie movie, like, like with the Barbie running around, you know, that she plays with. Uh, and mm-hmm. so I needed to watch it first so that I knew if it was appropriate enough for a 10 year old. Gotcha. And uh, while well, that's what I did. And so uh, in watching it, I figured actually most of it would probably just go right over her head, which is. What happened? However, she found it extremely entertaining and loved it and loves my shirt. She has a matching one uh, that she sleeps in. Nice. This is totally fun. So if they haven't figured it out, you're sporting a pink Barbie shirt. That's right. That's right. Love it. (laughs) It reminds me of the Calspar conference with Jackie Mm. and the crew and their Taylor Swift session, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Rave reviews. And then Kendra showed up coming from a baby shower and looked like she came right out of the session. (laughs) <laughs> and she had the shoes of the conference on. She had a pair of pink Jordans on. Yeah, they were amazing. Were incredible. Yeah, name drop Kendra. You know who was also on point with her shoes was Amber Nuvali. She's always on point with her shoes. Yeah, she was running around with a pair of kicks that were getting a lot of attention as well. Her and I usually do Fun Shoe Friday. Nice. I like that. You know who yeah. else had a uh, wardrobe was just amazingly on point? I don't know if you saw her the last day, but Christine Peck, Powell Unified, bright pink power suit man the whole thing it just she walked in a room and everybody knew she was there it was it was really good look yeah it was it was was a statement piece and then you know the first thing in the morning she came down a lobby and i was down there with i don't know six or seven other people and everybody was like what that is not a last day outfit that's not what you wear on the last day you know and everybody was joking oh she must have woke up just pulled it out of the closet you know (laughs) and um she always looked so put together yeah i saw the i noticed the she had very the pants on the uh awards reception mm. she was blinging yes Great. yeah man everybody looked great at the awards reception and uh a lot of fashion there a lot of fashion yeah shout out to we Sunday. need to do a, a red so, carpet and red carpet yeah. and do the interviews like e-entertainment and who are you wearing and you know what yeah, district are you representing what award are you winning this evening oh, we should do that next year that'd <laughs> be hilarious that. have the podcast set up off to the side and yeah do that. let's do that'd it be hilarious. put up put up the camera and just knock it out as people come out because Everybody we'll looked just fantastic. We'll do a peach jar extra credit so we get that on video. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love that. I like that. It's a good conference. What did you think of the Calisper conference we just got back from? Yeah, I thought it was really great. Um, you know, there was uh, – uh, I really like how they did the awards that night. Speaking of kind of the awards theme, like we should look at uh, having some of those folks on, you know, some of the award winners, mm-hmm. um, indicator of the year, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, but I, I liked it. Overall, it was really good. I do think it was a little jam-packed this year. I had some feedback come back to me, and, and also just I felt it as well. Like, you know, even some of the days went till 6 o'clock, and it was just stacked. 
Um, people didn't feel like they had enough downtime. Uh, and so I felt, I felt a lot of feedback just kind of came back around. I missed sessions or I couldn't attend at all, or I just had to take a break or mentally sit down for a little while. So I wonder if there is a such thing as too much professional development. No, there's no winning. You, if you do too little, you hear about it. If you do too much, you mm -hmm. hear about it. And it's like, you'd rather have, I feel like they did a great job as you, you, you and I talk about this. We both think they did a great job. The executive board and all the volunteers, the chairs, yep. um, and Trinette, the executive director. It's, it is a beast to put on a conference. It is a beast to do it of that size. Calspera has grown. Yeah. The, I would say the good part of having too many is you can take some, it's better to have too many than too less. So if you need a time off or you need to go and do something, go do it. But at least you have the option of going to a session or not. And you'll always get that. And when you grow, there's three or four. Oh, I'm missing this one. But that's every good conference. It, that's a good conference feedback. It actually sounds negative, but it's like, oh, I had too many options. I could. It's like, that's what you want. You want options. You don't want, you don't want to be standing around like, oh, there's two sessions. I didn't like either one of them. You want three or four in each book, each block of sessions. And um, so that's good. I, I went to one. The one that I really liked was on the First Amendment stuff, the mm, yeah. quote unquote auditors and actually Harold Freeman, the attorney that was in there, part of that session. I talked to afterwards. He actually works with our district and he's going to be on our podcast coming up soon. Awesome. Um, that was a really valuable one because a lot of school districts are dealing with some of those issues and PR, PRAs and the like. So looking forward to having Harold on the podcast. Um, and I know you were busy talking to a lot of people and some cool Peach Jar Extra credits coming up for sure. Yeah, we filmed seven and mapped out three more while while we were there that uh, we'll film back back here locally, which is in Orange County. So yeah, it's uh we got a lot of content coming out on Peach Jar Extra Credit pretty soon as well. And uh, we just recently launched a couple of great videos too. And one that I really love that I did with Samantha Fitzgerald out in Missouri. Um, <clears throat> on including student voice and your messaging and your materials. And they have, they do a really fun, unique thing. I'm not going to give it away. You got to go check out the video, but they do a really cool thing where they give a student a cell phone for a full day and just follow a day in the life. So it's kind of neat. You'll have to check it out. Very cool. It's good to see your peach jar crew up there. Yeah, we did. We had a great crew there. Um, Calspra and Texas, Teespra, and Tennessee, Tenspra were all relatively at the same time. They all kind of overlapped. And so uh, it was actually tricky for sponsors uh, with smaller teams to be able to meet with all of them. So that's why a lot of people showed up like the second day of Calspra. They left Teespra early to come to Calspra. And so uh, very, very tricky this year with the, with the overlap of three conferences all at once. But um, we had a really great crew in all three places and felt like all three conferences were great. And the next big conference will be Enspra. Will you guys be at Enspra? Oh, yes, we will. Absolutely. Yeah, Enspra, uh, they're uh, near Seattle. It's going to be a really big year. We got a uh, big crew going to Enspra. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, hope to do uh, some videos and podcasts from right there in the booth, which is going to be really neat and interesting this year. Some stuff live in front of everybody. Um, so hopefully we can get some peeps to participate in that. Uh, Looking forward to it. There's a lot of really great things to do up there, and, and we're looking forward to host, hosting actually a couple of really special events. And uh, you heard it here first, but karaoke is back. So, um, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Wait a yeah, second. Yeah, breaking yeah. news? Are we breaking Wait, news? As of yesterday, uh, as of yesterday, several of uh, the partners, yep, <laughs> other partners, the uh, Infra, two star included. Um, have gotten together again to bring karaoke back to the masses. So uh, stay tuned for more information on that. But it is back, the Battle of the Spras. Love it. I'll be up there doing a session on uh, internships. So I'm excited to do that. It's uh, on the Wednesday, the last day of the conference. So stop by if you're interested in internships. I did it. our whole last podcast was about how to set up your internship laying down the perfect foundation with certain circumstances. So if you're considering an internship, listen to 105. I, we started the National Internship Collab probably a year and a half ago. We have about 180 people from all over the country in it. So lots of people that have internships, lots of people that are considering it. 
they want best practices and get some new ideas. But um, in talking to some people, their big question is like, how do I set it up? And I set it up this way. And so I wanted to be crystal clear and kind of go over my best practices for laying the foundation, what type of students to use, uh, paid, unpaid, and there's mm -hmm. different circumstances for each district and CTE, non-CTE, but I kind of give my recommendations and the why behind them so you don't run into potential hurdles down the road. So that is our very previous episode, episode 105. And then if you're interested in internships, join that group. There's a link to join. It's free. And we do webinars and talk and we do small group breakouts all virtually so people can join. And then if you're going to be at NSPRA, I'll be doing a session on Wednesday. Love to see you guys there. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, we, we got to do some peach jar extra credits some podcasts up in Sacramento for the Calspic conference. Yeah. Definitely do some up in Seattle. That'll be super fun. Our, um, Episode 104 for It's So Great, Matthew. As you know, we both are on the Calisper board for several years, a few years ago, not too long ago. And it's great to see, you know, raise your hand if this is your first conference. Yeah. And now they, they have the badge. Lots of new people to the field. Our field is growing. Mm -hmm. I think everyone in it's doing a great job of proving the worth to their schools across the country. So Matthew and I, did a podcast 104 new to school PR survival guide. We kind of give for the year one folks our advice for best resources, groups to follow, what to do, how to do it. So if you're new to the field and Matthew is always so good about reminding me and everyone that there's so many new people that, you know, if we're going to a little dance, let's, let's go back and help out the newbies. Uh, so 104 is dedicated just to everyone new in school PR. And actually a lot of good reminders I heard from yeah. veterans. They appreciate it for some reminders. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you did, you and I did get to film a couple of piece extra credits uh, in Sacramento, which was a lot of fun. You know, one that came out of that, which is really interesting to me is AI in video. Yes. So I hadn't really dug into too much, but I got a chance to catch up with Jake Sturgis with Captivate and go through some of the things that we're looking forward to. And he's looking forward to in particular regarding AI and video, which is, you know, we all think about AI in Canva. We think about AI and the script writing we're doing or the, you know, the, the messaging that we're putting out there in chat GPT, but AI and photos, but I hadn't really invested a lot of energy into the thinking about AI and video, but he laid out some things that are really incredible. Yeah, AI was definitely a theme at the conference, yeah. and it will, I'm assuming, going to be a big theme at Enspra, which is mm -hmm. great. And if people haven't taken the dive into AI, it's worth it. We did a podcast here. I'm looking for the number, but uh, we did a podcast here. Was, uh, I had my... Um, I don't think you were on this one, Matthew, but it was with me, Chief Technology Officer and a Strategy and Innovation Guy. And just talking about the implications of AI, what it means, how you can use it, the benefits of it. So those are some good sessions. And I think just dive into it. I know it, it may be it's new. It's a little annoying, but it, it can help you. There's a lot of ways. And I think Christine did a session, pre-session maybe, or one of the day one sessions, just how you can use it, play with it, and help you for templates. And there's yep. a million things that you're writing that are annual things that... Um, it can save you a lot of time and you don't want to plagiarize and have some bot right, you know, when you're trying to make connections, but the ways that you can use it to your advantage and make your job more effective. So I would encourage people to look into it and start playing around a bit. Yeah. Could not echo that strongly. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say is the AI is super relevant. And I've said it before too. And I actually heard this at CGCS last year in St. Louis. And it was said, somebody asked, is AI going to take over our jobs? And the response was absolutely not. But the person that knows how to leverage AI will. Uh, it is huge. And it, it's such a time saver. It's so much more efficient to let AI do mm -hmm. some of the heavy lifting for you. So if you haven't, definitely start dipping in there. You know, it's cool your too. Friends, they've got help. And on Facebook, have you seen the new write captions with AI and the suggested AI in the latest version of Facebook? Mm, I haven't played with that, no. It's pretty cool. You write a caption and then you can tweak it it'll give you a little box under it and say write with ai and you can say you know write it positive write it with enthusiasm and and so it helps and it's it's ai is good it's not great yet it's not perfect it makes mistakes but it's just like social media 10 15 years ago don't don't wait to get 
<laughs> ahead of the curve and you know because people are like oh not you know on social media whatever but it's here to ai is obviously here to stay social media is here to stay and it's just another tool in your tool belt and the quicker you learn how to use it and effectively you're going to save time and so and it's fun it's kind of cool to see it and see what it comes out with and so i i would encourage people to to you know download or just go to chat gpt one of one of the easy ones and just absolutely and you get better at writing prompts and so you, you get better at putting in what you want it to get out. And it's kind of fun to see in just a few different tweaks of your prompt, the difference you get and how much more effective that is. So it's fun. It is fun. One of the things I love to do with it is, cause I, I do love the, I love the process of writing. And so like a lot of times I'll just go in and write it. So if you haven't dipped your toe in it, this is one of the ways I started using it originally was I just started, I would write down what I wanted. And a lot of times I'll just kind of, I call it throw up on the page. Like I'll just, I'll just get it all out. And then I'll go back and clean it all up. Well, AI does that for you. So I'll, I'll go into ChatGPT or, you know, uh, whatever the new Google one is. It's not barred anymore. I forgot what they renamed it. But mm -hmm. you, know, you take what you've written, you put it in there and you say, rewrite this to be more. And you give it a couple of prompts and then boom, uh, you make a couple of tweaks and, and you're, you're done. It's, it's, it's like having a second set of eyes on things in that way, which is cool. And I found it was a really easy way for me to get into learning how to use the prompts to get what I want out of it and having it work for me. Yeah. For sure. And it, it is great to what you said about the grammar. It's kind of like uh spell check built in. So it, it's just nice in that regard too. Yeah. And it gives you, you know, I know the, the Google one, I tried the Google one a few weeks back and it was a, a tense response <clears throat> that I was writing and it was, it was a fictitious response, but it was, it was tense. I was just kind of testing the system and it actually wrote back like, you know, you will get further if you use a kinder tone in this communication, something like that, you know? And it's like, wow, mm -hmm. right. Well, it's even like smart enough to figure out like the tone I'm going for here is not what I've got. So pretty cool. Yeah. I feel like that was some early AI programming is where you can do an analysis of the tone of your yeah. emails and what you wrote. And it was like, Ooh, this is a little too negative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, um, it's funny too, to see the evolution of the conferences you know, for years and still is always true. If you want people to go to your session, do one on crisis communications because yeah, so everyone's true. always so interested in crisis communications or on camera I, interviewing. Yeah, exactly. So I, I came across on my Facebook at a memory from 2019, uh, recently from like five years ago, crazy to think, but it was when I had, uh, Rick Kaufman on and you and I talked to him, I believe too, on yeah. a later podcast, but this was one of the first times I had him on. He's the PIO. He was the PIO at Columbine during that crazy school shooting. And so we talked crisis communication, techniques, strategies, and then we ran through an actual scenario. So that was pretty cool. That's one of our older episodes, but episode 24 from 2019. But if you're wanting some more crisis communications, that is one I definitely recommend uh, on That's the podcast. Great. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where uh, where Inspire goes and what the theme is there. I, I do think uh, Couchbro had a lot of AI stuff in there and a lot of cultural, like just relevancy stuff. I, I did like the First Amendment thing. Uh, people were talking to me about that. Really enjoyed that. It'll be interesting to see what the theme is in uh, Washington. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, WASPRA, the Washington chapter, put together a phenomenal website dedicated just for people traveling in for the conference. Anything and everything can be found there. It is top of the line. Like it is, it is a phenomenal website. So if you are going to Washington, and especially if it's your first time or your first Inspira, be sure to check out WASPRA's page on on the conference uh, for Inspira because it's it's really well done, and uh, it'll help you kind of get get the lay of the land. Where do we find that? Is it on the Waspro site? Is it on the Ensper site? Do you they know? posted it out on social media, actually. Um, okay. Uh, about a month ago. I will go in while we're here talking right now and try to find that. You want to hear some incredible news and why I'm going to Las Vegas immediately after the recording of this podcast? Uh oh, what's that? So I registered for Ensper this week. Um, I was going, but then... Once I found out I had a session, I'm I definitely going. Um, and I, you know, we told when we had a Curtis on, you know, we'll be there. So we got to go support. But I know the hotel room at the conference hotel, the, the, you know, room block was gone in like a matter of minutes on day one mm -hmm. months ago. So I'm on the website. I registered for the conference. I'm like, all right, let me figure out how many miles I'll be away and what hotel I need to stay at. 
saw the link for the conference hotels. Like, let me just for fun and giggles, check out the link. There happened to be one room at the conference hotel. That is awesome. Yep. So any of you that are in, in an overflow hotel, just know that uh, Mr. Ryan Ferran here was way, way late to the party and got himself <laughs> somehow in the hotel. So if you're upset about being in the overflow, be sure to take that out on Ryan Ferran. <laughs> that, was not the moral, that was not the moral of that story. Moral of that story is there's like, I don't know, a hundred people that are in that poor overflow situation and you just ducked in and just grabbed a room out from under everybody. Which Somebody... Is Somebody must have literally canceled on Monday when I was looking five minutes before I was looking, they put it up and I took it down. But the good news is still check the site because yeah. you never know if somebody cancels, they'll put that room up there. So there's rooms and they've done a great job with the backup uh, yep. hotels. And I, I think everything's pretty relatively close. So you should be yeah. good. Everything's relatively close and it's a nice, nice clean area. Uh, if you are in one of the overflow hotels, don't stress it. We're all going to be together. We'll all go out anyway and do stuff. There'll be a lot of events taking place out and around. Um, I know at Peach Jar, we're working really hard to, to make some special stuff. Uh, we are going to have that karaoke night, which is going to be fun. And I did check it out. If you go to WSPRA.com. So that's the Wasper page, WSPRA.com. There's a button right under the hero banner on their webpage called Inspra Seattle. And if you have not checked it out, I actually gave them a shout out on social media like, man, I see you all. You did well on this. So they've got a whole webpage dedicated to it. Things to do in, your, in the area. There's a great hype video. There's the conference details are all tracked there. There's a whole page dedicated to getting around. There's a whole page dedicated to FAQs, um, traveling there, the hotel. There's a calendar of events. All the social media feeds are linked and ready to go. I mean, they have done a job on this. What night is the Peach Jar Karaoke? Let's get this dialed in and start promoting it immediately. <laughs> Let's go. I'm still working on the details and selecting a venue at this time. But we've got, uh, from what I understand, there's a really good spot shaping up. And I think everybody will be very happy. It will be the spot to be. You won't want to miss it. You know what I will say? A couple of things to say about Peach Jar. Um, check them out, peachjar.com. But if you're not using online flyers, it's great to see your team up there. One thing that you guys started doing, which I think is genius to help with customer support. So usually vendors and partners go to the conferences and they have their team there. But what you guys have done is add your customer relations folks at the conferences. So the people that we talk to as we're going through the nitty gritty, getting our system set up and that we, if we need support. So it's great that you guys are there and we can always call you. But it's also, I think you guys are very smart and helpful that you also have your, I forget the exact title, but those people there that we'll be dealing with so we can meet them, talk to them, they can answer you know, even more questions. So it was great to meet uh, Bree, who's in that position there. And just knowing that you guys are very intentional about like, no, let's support everyone. And you're not just saying, oh yeah, we're gonna be there to support you. But you, you, it just, it just shows. And it was, I think it was, a lot of people had a lot of, saw a lot of value in that than I did. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's one of the things that we're doing, especially with the larger conferences where we can take more than one person, uh, is we're taking the people behind the scenes in that customer support role. Like Bree, for example, is in that district success role. And she, when a district decides to sign on with Peach Jar, launch Peach Jar in their district, we assign them to a very specific person that helps them through the entire process and then stays with them through the rest of their through the rest of their partnership with Peach Jar over, over the course of many years. They check in with the same person every single year. They become, you know, they get to know each other. That person gets to know the district, what their needs are, what their special needs are within their communities. Um, and they are the one person that they can always pick up the phone and call. We, we take real live calls all day, every day, um, which is really great. And so Bree is that person that, you know, gets to help launch Peach Jar at all the school districts and then support them once they go live. So, uh, she got a lot of love and, and ran into a lot of districts that she's been talking to recently that said it was really great to finally put a face with a name, like a live mm -hmm. person, not just a Zoom call or a phone call. Yeah. And uh, I know Keely wants me to mention to listen to episode 99 of the School PR podcast when we had uh, you, Keely, yeah. and Tabasum and the team on. And uh, so if you're interested in Peach Jar, we go over every bit of that. 
And so you can kind of learn about implementation, how easy it is. And then some of those FAQs we go over um, and talk about all those. So if you want to take a deep dive, you're not using peach jar, but want to learn more about it. Uh, and what's cool about that podcast is if you're intimidated by talking to somebody and the great thing about peach jar is nobody's, nobody's uh, hard sales at all, but you don't need to talk to anybody. You can listen to all of them and not, you know, kind of take in what you want and then fine tune it with questions and give them a call. So episode 99. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Definitely check it out. Got to see Nichols Strategies, Stephen Nichols and his team up in Sacramento doing good things and chat with them. And so that was really good. So if you're maybe a department of one, department of five, but you need some help, um, want to talk strategies, see a bunch of case studies, check out NicholsStrategies.com. They can uh, come in, help you with some of those bigger projects, crisis communications, or if you're like, I don't need anyone now, but you're in the middle of a major crisis and it just hit. You may want to keep that number and website handy, nickelstrategies.com, because they can, a lot of experienced people that have been through every situation you can imagine and can help at the uh, drop of a hat. So that's helpful. And then speaking of Seattle, and uh, our final sponsor to mention is SoundMind, uh, created helping mental health uh, programs throughout the country and school districts. And cool thing about my session about internships is I have two former interns that are now alumni that live in Seattle. So I will have one, maybe two student perspectives at my session talking about internships, what they found valuable, kind of how to gear it towards students and attract students, recruit them and the best parts of the program for them. So that'll be amazing to because they both are living up there and doing amazing things. So that will be cool. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Matthew, anything else besides, uh, you know? No, I think, it, think that's it for me. We, uh, we've we really officially kicked off uh, conference season here. We've got a lot of great conferences planned over the next several months and uh, a lot of great new features and functionality coming out with Peach Jar over the next several months and looking forward to INSPRA and uh, CGCS, the Council of Great City Schools, which takes place just before or just ahead of INSPRA each year, which is fun. So, uh, no. So, got, are you going is – that, is that in Seattle? I remember you telling me about that conference last year. Is that in Seattle is. right before? Yep. It's in Seattle right before, right in the same spot. Um, so, yeah, that's the Council of Great City Schools, are the largest school districts across the United States of America. we got a lot of – really great friends uh, as part of that council and um, and a lot of great Peace Jar districts that are part of that council, which is fun. So it's good to go see them. Very cool. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, X. Check out nickelstrategies.com, peachjar.com, soundmind.app. Support those that support us. Matthew, you're supporting the movie Barbie. You're doing it well. Got you. <laughs> doing it and doing it well. And another thing you do well. Another thing you do well. The guitar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right, everybody. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. A little chat. Yep. Zoom. And uh, that's it. All right. See you.